Hey, Jason Rice here, going live. And I want to wait to get some people on here, but I wanted to go over activities per lead. Um, this is a metric that we started to track at uh, LaPop about five years ago. And I want to kind of, I know people are joining and I'm going to build this out just to get more people on. But I also, I want to talk about um, how uh, activities per lead will help increase your uh, sales. It'll help increase your appointment ratios and so forth. And I'm going to, in the comments section, when I get a chance here, I want to add some photos uh, to the links and um, show you the results that you get. But I'll just give you some background of where I can come, why I can come up and talk about this is I started retail sales in 1997. I actually started doing internet sales in 1998. So for eight years, almost a decade, I was selling cars, made a living off of selling cars off the internet, um, again, almost 20 years ago, and ran internet departments and uh, managed them. And then over the last five years with LotPop, I've been helping dealerships. As we help them with inventory management, get more leads, I help them again with inventory uh, lead management. So one of the things that we started tracking at LaPop, because we're not at the store, we can't see the activity going on. I can't tell if the BDC or salesperson that's supposed to be doing all these calls and emails are actually doing their job or not. So one of the metrics that we started creating was what I call activities per lead. It's a very generic term, but what we look at, and again, I have all the charts for this. I'm gonna to try to get it in the post here if I can underneath comments. It doesn't look like it allows me to add photos, but I will add these comments in there as we go, uh, maybe after this ends. But what we talk about activities per lead is, all you gotta do is we look at a weekly chart and like say, let's go VIN solutions as your CRM. We go to VIN solutions and look at the activity per rep. And what I wanna see in that week's time is how many emails did they send and then I also want to look at how many calls they did, did they do. So let's say that person happens to do 100 emails and 500 calls. That's 600 activities. And let's say that person ended up with 50 leads or 25 leads. So that's more manageable. 30 leads, let's say. So if he did 600 activities on 30 leads, essentially. Now that's just their, that's their current leads, but I would show 20 activities per lead. And that gives you a feel for how much uh, activities that are actually going out on these leads. Because the old saying, if you want to sell more cars, talk to more people. Well, if you want to sell more leads, you need to try to contact and engage them more frequently. And that goes into process management. How many calls, how many emails do you put within your process? And if your people are actually working the progress. And so by looking at activities per lead will actually tell you if they're working the full process or not. Now, um, you could do that for a weekly and a monthly chart, but you also can break it down. When you're looking at it, you just don't want to look at they did 20 activities per lead. You actually want to track and trend out how many calls and how many emails. Somebody could just be doing more calls and more emails week after week, but in reality, all they did was have more leads. So they were just keeping up and maybe they were doing less activities per lead. You're like, man, you, your phone call shot up this week. Well, their lead shot up also. So it doesn't mean they did more effective job. But if you can track separately how many calls and how many emails, if their activities per lead start dropping, you can see if it's done by phone or if it's done by email communications. Couple ways to help increase as an internet manager, lead manager, a um, couple ways to increase your activities per lead is not just completing your one day, two day, three day, five day, seven day, 14 day phone call tasks, complete those tasks. But a lot of times what you want to do is um, follow up with them. What I mean by that is, let's say you're doing phone calls and you're leaving voicemails. I would shoot out an email after every single phone call, regardless of what type it was. Um, so for an example, if I call and leave a message today, I'm gonna shoot an email that says, hey, just left your voicemail, wanted to touch base with you at the beginning of the month, we have some new incentives going on, whatever vehicle, please give me a call or email back so I can update you on what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So if I'm leaving a voicemail, and again, the, a lot of times you might end up doing 100 calls, leaving 80 voicemails, a tip would be at the end of that voicemail, leave it to say, please give me a call back or just reply to the email that I send you. So do the voicemail, end it with that, 
because a lot of times what happens is like myself, I get busy at work, I get home, when I get home, I've got, you know, wife and kids and we're busy and getting dinner going and then trying to decide what we're doing that evening. And by the way, I got a voicemail. So I listen to the voicemail on my at home or on my phone. I'm like, ah, I ain't got time to call him back. We're in the middle of dinner. I'll just make sure I email him back because they drop the seat. Give me a call back or just reply to the email I sent you. So I might shoot to my email real quick and say, hey, uh, give me a week. I'm still shopping or whatever. So uh, ways to increase activities per lead, not only complete your task, but take those extra steps of leaving the voicemail, but also sending an email. So regardless of the conversation, you should always follow up with an email. If you schedule an appointment, follow up with the email. Thanks for your time of day uh, today. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday at two o'clock. I have the car pulled forward. So send an email. If you talk to them and they said, hey, my wife is really not considering the F-150 anymore. We might go to Dodge, but I'll let you know. Send out an email. Thanks for your time on the phone today. I hope to uh, be able to spend some time to educate you on the difference between Ford and F-150. Maybe send them a comparison. Regardless of the conversation, if they say, you know what, I'm never going to buy a car from you guys. You suck. I had my car in service there and they tore it up, whatever. Email them back. Sorry about your experience. Bop, bop, bop. So, one way to increase activities per lead is always reply, uh, send an email to the voice, uh, to the phone calls that we're doing, even if it's a voicemail, in between the maybe the emails that are templated and send it out. That gives you that personalized template. Same thing, you got templates going out one day, three day, five day, seven day. These templates are going out. Maybe you're sending them, but you want to, or you're creating your own conversations with the customers through emails. Uh, so if you do have templates going out and automatically sending in between those emails going out, send personalized ones, which has to do with the customer, where they're at with the sale, what it has to do with the car. If the car that they're looking at is getting a lot of traction online, you might want to let them know, hey, I know you're interested in this vehicle. We're getting a lot of people looking at it. Wanted to see if you can make it in soon before it sells. If the rebate changes, so forth. So please, I can tell you the dealers that get in the 20 activity per lead, uh, activities per lead tend to do a lot better than the dealers that do in five, eight, 10 activities per lead. That's the first thing that we start driving up is the activities per lead. And I'm gonna, I've had previous posts, again, I thought when I went live, I can throw uh, some images in here. It's only let me write comments and do smiley faces so I can't uh, do images. But once this ends, I'm going to try to add some images to this post that show and prove the activities per lead as they go up. You can see the appointments go up, the show go up, the sold go up. And I'm going to show you a chart on how you can look at, again, how many phone calls a person does, how many emails a person does, and their activity per lead. And the other thing on that chart that I wanted to go over is you're going to see a spike in activities per lead. And you've got to pay attention to that because here's what's happening. Um, as you're working leads, e either as an internet manager, salesperson, and or as a manager overlooking this department, what happens is, is you guys start, we start having slow days and, our, and not a lot of people walking in the door. So we said, man, let's pound the phone. Let's get some emails. And, and again, activities per lead can be text messages. I, I forgot to include that in there, but text messages, emails, and phone calls. But you know, as the as we're slow, we start pounding the activity. We start calling, email, and texting customers, and our activities per lead go up. And then for that week, we get a big spike in activities per lead. And then next week, it drops down. And what's happening? All that activity I did last week is starting to drive people into the door this week. And all of a sudden, I'm busy selling cars, doing demos, meeting and greeting customers, and my activities per lead drop off. We sell some cars, we had a good week, and next thing you know, we're dead again for a couple of days. They're like, man, get back on the phone, let's pound, get texts, get emails, let's get activities going again. Our activities per lead shoots back up, and then a week later, all that stuff trickles in. So all the activity that you do, you might not see an instant gratification from it. It trickles down to the next week, and all of a sudden, you get too busy to even keep up on phone calls and emails. So the best performing stores will try to keep that consistency there. Keep the same amount of activities per lead. Don't let it deviate too high, too low, too high, too low. Those are going to be those, those good and bad weeks and good and bad months. So uh, keep that in mind as you track these numbers. Consistency is key stick to the process, but add your own stuff. Again, what I mean by that is you have templated emails going out, let's say one day, three day, five day, and in between you're calling day two, day four, day six, as you're leaving, calling people, 
follow up with emails. And even if you only are scheduled to call every other day in your process, try to call every day. Try to call, if you've been calling at night, try to call in the morning, try to send out a text, try different ways to get a hold of these people. But basically, again, you wanna sell more cars, talk to more people, that means you need to reach out to them more frequently and reach out to them the way they like to be reached out to. Maybe it's text, maybe it's email, maybe it's phone. So hopefully this is helpful. Again, I'm gonna get these charts in here so you can see kind of those trends, uh, kind of proof in the pudding there with those, those charts. Give me a call or email. There's a link here. I'd like to get a demo. Anybody wants to see what we're doing, we're really deep diving into people, your people, and if they're doing our activities per lead, their pro your processes. I'll be able to tell you customers you haven't called and emailed in seven days. I'll be able to pinpoint exactly the customers you're not engaging with and how long it's been since you engaged with them. We can look, and so we'll know if the process, I'll know if we're setting appointments on 30, 40, 50 day old leads. You know, it's one thing to cherry pick those fresh, fresh leads that are ready to buy, but are you doing a long-term follow-up and setting appointments on 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 day old leads? That's how you get your closing percentage up. So we know if it's a people or process problem, We'll know if it's a provider problem, your listing sites, autotradercars.com, car groupers, true car, wherever you're listing your vehicles, we, we do a, a scoring system to grade each one of those outs, the contact ratios to lost sales reports, things like that. And then we also know if, if it's your product, we're helping you with the inventory management. We know if your pricing's too high, that's why your leads are down. Or maybe you got the wrong cars in inventory and that's why your leads are down. So. There's a Calendly link in this uh, that you can click on to schedule a demo. I'd like to go over that stuff. Again, it's a way deeper dive than what you're getting out of your CRMs. Uh, J Rice at lotpop.com, 844-LOTPOP4, or just uh, email me or uh, go to our website, sign up evaluation, and I will hope to post another one next week. Thanks.